We are in Westmount in Max and I's house. It is an old and quirky home with beautiful rooms, a great flow, but it is a formal house. And we wanted to keep that formalness to the house and give it our own spin on how we live today in that type of house. I think living with an old home, you really have to embrace those imperfections. If you're trying to fix everything about it and you're fighting against the grain, I think you're going to be unhappy with the end result. If you're actually going with it, I think this is how it's going to reveal itself in a much better way. Those quirks and elements that are imperfect will become even more interesting and they will be part of the story of the house. I think that's how to do it. At the beginning, when we first moved in, what we were envisioning was to open the kitchen to the large living room. And it actually is a great thing that we didn't. We actually looked at the space that was in there where it had washer and dryer, it had a sitting area, it had a small kitchen. Everything was crammed into that small space. Opened it up, obviously. But it is a angled room. It doesn't have a really uh, square space. So for us, the emphasis was to bring in the light and go towards the window. So we embraced the angle and had the floating shelves in the front of the window. For me, that was the most important part of what we were trying to do in that kitchen. Not have upper cabinets, not bring it into a lot of elements in there. On the contrary, open it up and leave it as, as open as possible. I think all of the elements that we've done in there, the chevron floors that are multicolored but very soft and echoing with the wooden cabinets that are very vertical, but also having the deep plum colored cabinetry shaker style to respect the idea of the old home. The mix of all these elements together and obviously not having an island in the space, but more of a harvest table that's the centerpiece that's more open and soft. It's not a static piece in the center that blocks the view, but that blocks also the space. For us, it was all elements that made it feel that it was as open as possible in that space. What I love about these old homes is that they have double parlors rooms, so like more of a atelier feeling of collected rooms. The living rooms is set as a double room, one side as the fireplace, one side as the TV, but it's all connecting as many seating and groupings of seating. Um, they don't really mesh together as conversation of how they are decorated or, or talking to each other, but that's mainly what I love about it. It's more eclectic and a mix. But there are two different rooms that are just separate by a large archway. When we bought the house, the fireplace that was there was a horrible 1986 type of stone and feeling that was there that was, we weren't going to keep that. So found a piece of an old mantle that was actually in wood and had a faux finish of stone made on, onto it, which we love. Um, great trick. It is an important point of view in that room. And for me, I love angles that are unexpected. So I did everything around the fireplace, but I've still placed furniture on an angle that it keeps it interesting. It is not a perfect symmetrical living room. I'm crazy for English arms. So in any homes, either for ourselves or clients or so on, if there's an English arm that can be brought in, I will bring it in. And especially with having our fantastic fabric on it from Brunswick, which is one of my favorites. Having the long sofa in there feels like a more of an art gallery collection in that room. There's a lot of pieces there on the walls, but it's all around that sofa. And we wanted it to be a room that will be used every day. It's next to the kitchen. We want to sit in there. We want to have a drink. We want to watch TV but we want it to be accessible, but it still feels like a formal room in there. When we come into the main hall, it is really the center point. There's a lot going on in that space, but it is a good flow and you're, you're getting a good, great sense of the house when you're standing in that space. The main hall does not have a lot of architectural details and because it is also a room that has a lot of shapes connecting to the stairs and so on, we wanted to anchor the center of the room with the table and the light fixture and have that detail in the ceiling that was anchoring that main view when you're coming in. 
The dining room, for me, it's, it's all about these chairs that we found at the beginning of our relationship, me and Max. Having them lacquered, they became something of an object that made it feel a bit more contemporary in a way. The drawings on the walls are very whimsy. They are part of something that is what would be expected in a type of dining room in that era. Um, but I think, again, bold colors and bold patterns and uh, fun light fixture, then those are the things that I think reflect how we live today, but still embracing the past of what this room could have been. The way that we've revisited the house upstairs, there were some good rooms, obviously, the octagonal library. Max wanted a library. We created the bookcases around the room. It's all crooked, but once you start playing with the elements, you can balance out all of these things. But beautiful place where we actually sit and watch TV again or read a book. Compared to the downstairs, where the downstairs feels much more open, upstairs feels very cocoon in that library. The master bedroom is, again, in old homes, if you're going to embrace what's there, there is absolutely no wall big enough for a king bed in our home. So instead, did a four-poster bed, reinterpreted. I didn't want a canopy. I didn't want it to be too busy in the room. So instead of that, what we did is that have the canopy bed sit in front of the bay window in the master bedroom. It actually floats there. For me, again, it's that echoing of the atelier way of living in a space. Even though it is not square and big, it is still working with two nightstands and the floating bed in the center of the room, and it's all about that. I love the idea of our bedroom enfilade to the bathroom and enfilade through our closet. Our closet is something that is, I think, completely off mark in a good way for me. I didn't want a formal closet where a lot of cabinetry and a lot of pieces. I'd rather have elements of floating, hanging, open, and we've created a couple of shelving systems that work really well for us. And it feels like a lived-in room. I have all my objects there. It really is how we live, and that's what I love about it. Everything is accessible. I wanted it to feel like it's one of the rooms of the house, not a closet space completely close to the rest. What's interesting about collecting pieces. I think it's really, for me, important to have things that remind me great moments or memories or, 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 or the past of my family or so on. It doesn't have to be a lot of pieces. I think we should hold on to some of these elements to bring into your home. Again, always putting it around new and fresh and modern and, and ways of living. I love modern furniture, but I think I love it more when it's juxtaposed to something that has a bit of history. I think that's the dialogue that brings interest and conversation. But also, I think if, if you're going to keep something from your parents, grandparents, or so on, we all connect to those memories and those things that had great history or meaningful elements through the family. I think those things, even though right now when you're leaving or you're trying to bring it in, you say, oh, I've had this for so long, I'm so tired of seeing it. Once you've put it into a new setting, with different pieces and completely revisited, it has so much character. Those are the things that I think are important.